Taipei is perhaps best known for its iconic architecture and abundance of street food. Come to Taiwan for this dessert. It also has an affordable zoo practically in its center, a zoo so enormous that it has all of my top four favorite animals. Don't miss our tips for visiting it. As for street food, look no further than the Rauha Night Market, famous for its pork pepper buns and crowds. Welcome to another beautiful, if a little bit cool, day here in Taiwan. We are at the Taipei Zoo today. Not just for kids anymore. We couldn't miss this site because we've heard that it's amazing. Later on, we are going to go to one of the most popular night markets in all of Taiwan. So this is going to be an amazing, fun day. I guess we have a lot to do. The animals are waiting. Let's get going. <laughs> We've never seen koalas before. It is probably the thing I am most looking forward to seeing here. Are you excited to see a koala, Bill? I'm ready. We've never been to Australia before. So is there anywhere else that has a koala? Maybe we'll find out. They're from Dananda. That's horrible. <laughs> we definitely want to see two things, and we're going to see them right away. Anticipating the crowds will only get bigger as the day goes on. That's the koala bear and the giant panda. And they're right near the entrance, so we are going to those places first, and then we'll see what comes next. I think the koala looked right at me. It was like love at first sight. <laughs> between me and the koala bear. They're it's very so cute. cute. It They're... looks so furry, it looks so soft. <laughs> oh, I wish I could touch it. <laughs> <laughs> They're adorable. We saw one in person. First time. Even the insects are cute. I can't believe that we got to see our first koala here in Taiwan. I did not expect to see one until we eventually made it to Australia. Now we are headed to the giant pandas, which we have seen before. We've seen them at three zoos. I think we've seen four of them total, so we're adding to that. Soon we're not going to be able to count them. <laughs> Both the pandas were sleeping. I would guess that they are most active first thing in the morning, which now it's sort of midday, and late in the day. This is interactive art, and the thing I just turned is a rain stick, the thing that makes those really cool sounds when you turn it up and down. The tall pieces kind of look like trees, which is really cool. The colors of this are beautiful. I, I love this art display. Easily the closest we've ever been to elephants. At one point, one of them was about 15 feet in front of me. I felt like I could reach out and touch its leathery looking skin. But of course I couldn't, nor did I try. In the little pavilion that they have, you can get so close, it's amazing. We're now entering the tropical rainforest area. I would say that my two favorite animals are koalas and elephants, with giraffes coming in like third. And I think I might be seeing all three of my favorite animals today. <laughs> What's your favorite? What was the African uh, wild ass? That's, that's my favorite. <laughs>
walking through and some monkeys just start kind of jumping out in front of us. Just never know when monkeys could just attack. Oh. Where? About six feet in front of me. I don't see anything. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> they were really monkeying around. Terrible, terrible. Oh my gosh. Sloths might be my fourth favorite animal. <laughs> They're so cute. A sloth minder. I think her job is to make sure the sloth is safe, which is really cool. I think she's yelling at us to move, but thankfully we don't speak Chinese. We sort of stood there and watched the sloth for a little bit. It moved a lot faster than I expected. Like, I thought sloths hardly moved. This one moved quite fast. We've been through a half a section and I think the zoo closes in three hours. I just want to stand here and watch the sloth. <laughs> it's so cute. The pangolin dome was amazing. I don't think we saw a pangolin in there, but everything else we saw was amazing, especially the sloth and the little monkeys that were running around. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. That was really cool. I enjoyed that a lot. Those interactive areas are just fantastic. <laughs> Our favorite parts of zoos yeah, by far. No question. We are leaving the tropical rainforest. We saw some otters on the way out. I could watch them play for a really long time. They are so fun and cute. But now we're gonna head to a different section. Uh, do you know where we're going? I'm going wherever you're going. I'm going where he's going. I guess we'll all find out where that is together. <laughs> all right, we got a plan. We consulted a map and we are going to the Australian and the desert areas. Hey, Bill, did you find your ass? <laughs> we finally found the animal I was looking for, which is the African wild ass. Oh, there it is. It turns out it's just the wild version of a donkey, and they got stripes on their wings. I've never seen one before. This one right back there. It turns out that Bill's wild ass is actually quite rare. There's only a couple hundred of these that are living in the wild right now in the entire world. So they are considered critically endangered, this particular subspecies. There are donkeys everywhere, but this particular one is actually quite rare. Didn't know that, did you? Look at you dropping the knowledge. <laughs> I, I had to look up Bill's wild ass to find out more about it. <laughs> Just in case it doesn't translate well, ass means butt in English. <laughs> Just in case. In American English. In American English, asses, but it's also a little bit of a swear word, a tiny one. So it's kind of fun to say on camera <laughs> when you're not swearing. What was the African wild ass? Hey, Bill, did you find your ass? The African wild ass. Bill's wild ass? I, I had to look up Bill's wild ass to find out more about it. That's, that's my favorite. But using it in a genuine sense. Yeah. That's, that's what I was going for. We have entered the Australian area. We thought that the first animal that we saw was a turkey, but it was a cassowary. They look a lot alike.
giraffes were fantastic. We've seen giraffes before, but just either by luck or by planning, we're not sure. There was a tree right in front of the viewing area and the giraffe came up and uh, it needed a snack. It was amazing. Also, its tongue is like two feet long <laughs> to reach the tree branches. It was, that was amazing. That was really, really cool. Are we still in Australia or have we moved on? I think we might be in a different section now. All right, check the map. The African animal area is indeed where we are now with the giraffes. As we're walking around, it really strikes me how well everything is maintained. The grounds are just beautiful. All the gardening is really well done. And the cages are clean and the animals look well cared for. Sometimes zoos can be hit or miss. Yeah, this, this is a good one. This one is a really easy one to recommend. It's a great zoo. Yeah. Plus it was only like two American dollars to get in, which is absolutely incredible. We are having to be selective about the areas that we go to because we are running out of time. <laughs> One of the reasons we came to the African animal area is because there's more elephants. And as I already mentioned, elephants are one of my favorite animals. So now I have seen Asian elephants and African elephants all in one day at the same zoo. It's amazing. Also, the smell of their poop has a very impressive range, like really impressive. Hey, this is not, this is not bamboo. I've been bamboozled. <laughs> the final section that we're making time for today is the Formosan area. Because we've been on Taiwan this whole time, we're kind of curious to see some of the animals that we think we've seen in wild here at the zoo. Starting with the monkeys, which we have run into all over Taiwan. I'm pretty sure they're the same, how cute. Yeah, they look like the same ones that we've seen, but bigger, definitely bigger. Okay, Bill thinks that these are not the same ones we've been seeing in the wild because they're so much bigger. It's hard to imagine that the littler ones that we saw are the same thing but they might be. What have we been seeing in the wild? <laughs> if you know what we've been seeing all over Taiwan, let us know. They were definitely monkeys and they were definitely smaller than these. <laughs> this is a Formosan Cerro. We were apparently really lucky to see a Cerro when we were in Japan. We saw one in the wild when we were on Mount Koya. And we were told afterwards by uh, people who viewed our video from Japan that it's pretty rare to see them. So it's kind of cool to see the Formosan version here at the zoo. It kind of feels like our travels have come a little bit full circle. When we first arrived in Taiwan like a month ago, we saw so much of Japan here. And now we're at the tail end of our trip. And here we have something that we saw in Japan again. I think it's kind of cool how it comes full circle like that. It might feel like we have shown you so many animals in this video. We can't talk about all of the animals that we saw today. This zoo is absolutely huge. Before we head off to the night market, where we might eat some animals. That feels awkward after spending all day at the zoo, <laughs> but it's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Before we go, we wanted to give you just a couple of tips if you decide to come to the Taipei Zoo. First, you can actually pay for the entrance fee with your Easy Pass or whatever the other card is called, <laughs> which makes it really easy to get in. In addition, there are filtered water dispensers all over the park 
which is fantastic. You don't need to bring more than a small bottle of water and you just keep topping it up as you go. Third tip that we have is to consider bringing your own lunch. We spend a lot of time standing in line at McDonald's in order to grab lunch. And we saw a lot of local families who brought their own from outside the park and then they ate in some of the picnic areas that were available. If we were to do it again, that is absolutely something that we would do. We would bring our lunch with us. Uh, speaking of food, time for the night market. By the time we get there, it'll probably be night. And time to eat. I'm hungry, let's go. We arrived at the night market. We are at Rauha Night Market. <laughs> We actually splurged and took a taxi to get here. And I have to say the entrance to this one looks amazing and it is indeed incredibly popular. We have a few specific things that we are seeking out tonight that are still on our list of foods to try while we're here in Taiwan. But really we are wondering, can this market be better than Keelong? Which we really enjoy. We got a lot to do. Let's get going. There's a lot of people here. They must know something. So let's go see what we can find. I have a feeling that this line across the road is our first stop. That was the line that we're standing in and it's even longer than I thought because it goes around the corner. thing we're going to try at this market is these clay oven buns which the line was long enough that we bought two of them not just one <laughs> we are guessing that these are pretty good they smell delicious just slightly burnt the outside of these are really crispy people seem to be enjoying them on the streets i can't wait to try these <laughs> this is going to require a few more bites to get to the middle hang on one more all right, these are delicious. They are incredibly hot. You can see the steam coming off of them. And they are incredibly crispy on the outside and doughy in the center. The meat, I have no idea what it is. My guess is pork. And it also has green onions. And it also is a little bit spicy. I would say, Bill's gonna say it's mild and I would say it's medium. Again, it's very well documented. I cannot handle my spice. This is delicious. I can see why there's so many people in line the patty inside is so moist and tender and juicy it's absolutely delicious this is a great start for this market i'm really excited for what else we're going to find here well bill said that the spice on those was a solid medium it kept building as you ate also this market is absolutely packed like people have not stopped streaming in by us and i think that we stopped at one of the first places we've not seen this quantity of people in any night market of all the ones we've been to in Taiwan for the last month. I'm not sure I can handle this level of crowds. <laughs> it's a lot. So the crowds here are epic. We've not been able to move very freely, but it's, it's still a ton of fun. It's, and the energy here is just, is just great. My favorite ice cream in Taiwan is here. It is the frozen heart place that we had we were bicycling and it was amazing and they have the same flavor which means i get to eat this again apple flavored blueberry coming up i cannot believe i get to eat this again because it was my favorite dessert in taiwan so they take these ice cream pucks and they wrap them in dough and then they deep fry them and this one is apple flavored blueberry so let's see if it's as good as when we were bicycling and hot and tired and starving How do they do this? The ice cream itself is absolutely delicious. I don't know if it's a sherbet or an ice cream because it tastes different than ice cream. And the dough is just fried goodliness. And the match between the crispy dough and the ice cream in the inside that melts in your mouth. Like come to Taiwan for this dessert. <laughs> it's not like a typical Taiwan Taiwanese dessert, but it's really that good. And now I'm wondering, should I have bought Bill one when I was up there? Huh. We have 
haven't found what we're looking for yet. It took us about an hour to walk from end to end, just down one of the lanes. We did find one thing and a bonus item. You know how when you're in this huge crowd and your feet like barely move and you can move them just a little bit at a time? We call that a shuffle walk. And we just shuffle walk the entire length of the market. I find that exhausting. Do you guys, do you know what I'm talking about? The shuffle walk? So this is a little bit much for me, but we still are on the hunt, as Bill said, for the things that we haven't found yet. So we gotta go back in and go down the other side. It is extremely crowded. I hope we find the other things on the other side. I am quite tired. We found what are called beef packs. They look a little bit more like what I would call a beef roll. And it looks delicious. There's an enormous quantity of green onions inside these. It's got thinly sliced beef rolled up in something that looks a little like a tortilla. I also put a bunch of hot sauce at one end, and this is the piece that absorbed nearly all of it. I'm sure this will go well for me. So that was an enormous bite, and that was the main problem. It was also very spicy, which is a minor problem, but really delicious. There's a nice crunch to the outside of the roll. There's also a nice crunch to the onions, and it's kind of a hot and cold thing, so it's all mixed up in one, and it's just, it's just a, a wonderful mix and just really tasty. Our next item is a steamed rice thing, not the technical name, of some kind with a peanut dusting on top. It is very hot. <laughs> it's kind of shaped like a mushroom with a thicker base and then a flatter top. I'm not really sure how hot this is, so I'm just gonna give it a small bite. <laughs> Make sure I don't burn my mouth. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's more peanuts on the inside. Oh, this is really good. It's hard to describe. It's like a super sticky rice that has been all smashed together and compressed into the form of a flathead mushroom. And it has like a peanut paste on the inside and a peanut dusting that's slightly sweet on the top, giving this a slightly sweet yet also slightly salty texture. It is really, really good. I see why they were selling these six at a time for most people, and then I just came up and I was like, one please. Most people were buying six. <laughs> it's really good. Oh yeah. That was fantastic. To answer the question, do we like Keelung better? Well, the food here was fantastic. The variety and the flavors are just amazing. However, the crowds were also phenomenal. <laughs> Not in a good way. There's just a lot of people here. And for that reason alone, I think we would prefer Keelung. Yeah, this place, as Bill said, was a zoo. And speaking of zoos, we spent an epic day in Singapore visiting not one, but three zoos in one very long day. So if you love zoos and want to see what Singapore is up to, you should check out this video right up here. It was quite the day. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye. That's, that's all. all. That's all either of us have. That's it. That's, that's all you that's get. That's the end of the story. That, that's <laughs> it. Goodbye.